The MyFord lathes are popular in the engineering community. In this video I'll walk through many of the features of this MyFord Super 7 Connoisseur and discuss the reasons behind why we predominantly use MyFord lathes here in the Cronova workshops. The first feature I'd like to demonstrate is the quick change gearbox, allowing the ability to cut nearly any thread, be that metric or imperial, very conveniently. Additionally, it's easy to switch between screw cutting and fine feeds by simply swapping a gear assembly. The pitch or feed rate can then be selected with two levers. Before turning the lathe on, it's important to make sure all the necessary bearings are well lubricated. The front headstock bearing uses a bronze tapered hydrodynamic bearing to take lateral forces and thrust forces are transferred to a pair of angular contact bearings at the back of the headstock. Now let's turn the machine on and have a look at the longitudinal feed and the cross feed. One of the compromises here in comparison to a tool room lathe is the use of the lead screw for fine feeds rather than a dedicated motor as you would see on a hard inch HLV for example. This means that some vibrations from the gearbox are transferred to surface finish imperfections. In reality though we find this to be a minor limitation which we can overcome by using alternative finishing techniques. The Super 7 lathes come fitted with a clutch which is great for many older motors which aren't well suited to being turned on and off regularly. On this model both the primary and secondary drives are fitted with poly V-belts which provide a smoother transmission than standard V-belts. From our experience though this improvement is only noticeable at higher speeds but for discerning users it is possible to convert the standard V-belt drive on the standard Super 7. Here we show the mandrel handle which is a great addition for screw cutting. The top slide on the Super 7 lathe can be rotated a full 360 degrees. It's not very often you need to go beyond 60 degrees but sometimes it can come in very useful. Here we show engagement of back gear which provides a significant speed reduction with an increase in spindle torque. The bull wheel used for the back gear can also be used for indexing. In our previous video we suggested using the lead screw hand wheel for moving the carriage. Here we demonstrate an alternative which makes use of gauge blocks and a custom built stop. The gauge blocks can be placed on a shelf fitted to the gearbox and then a rod can be moved up until it touches that gauge block. When the gauge block is then removed the carriage can then be moved accurately by the size of the gauge block. Here we show machining up to a shoulder using this method but this is particularly useful for boring a blind hole where it's difficult to see what exactly is going on. One of the key improvements of the Super 7 over the ML7 is the tailstock. The thrust bearing installed in the tailstock makes drilling an absolute joy. One of the modifications we made to this tailstock barrel is engraving numbers to make it easier to read drill depth. When doing small work the MyFord can be a bit unwieldy. If you've seen some of our other videos you will know that we already have a watchmaker's lathe but in all honesty it's not needed if you own a MyFord. A collet adapter can be fitted which could be an ER16 system as you see here or a horological collet adapter which allows holding small work pieces. With the right motor the Super 7 is capable of spindle speeds of up to 3000 rpm. A sensitive lever style attachment in the tailstock makes it easy to drill small holes. The attachment you see here is shop built and makes for a fun project but it can also be purchased. Even without the sensitive attachment the tailstock hand wheel provides ample sensitivity for drills down to around 0.5mm but I would recommend a sensitive drilling attachment for holes less than 1mm. Ok so these machines are great for small things but what about large stuff? Much like the Dorr Westbury milling machine, the Myfords are not as solid as many other machines out there, but they are capable of quite large jobs. Regardless of whether it is a small bore machine or a big bore, they are both very versatile. A lathe is no use without accessories to go with it. The most important spindle chuck is the 4 jaw independent, and any other chuck, such as a 3 jaw, only adds to the convenience and not to the capability. A tailstock chuck is also a must. We are a fan of the Olbrecht keyless chucks although they can be a bit pricey. Another great feature of these machines is the gap bed which provides a 250mm diameter swing. This is phenomenal for a machine that can be lifted by only two people. 
Of course, the length of a large diameter workpiece is limited by the length of the gap. As an example of the kind of thing we might use a MIFID for, here we machine a component from 316 stainless steel for a prototype coffee machine. 316 is notoriously tough to machine, but the lathe handles it admirably. Facing off is made easier with power crossfeed, and the speed of the motor can be gradually increased as the tool progresses towards the centre. This lathe is fitted with a one horsepower motor, which means drilling large holes in this material has to be done in steps, but it is still capable of drilling to just under size, which can then be brought to 18mm with a boring bar. The component is finished on the milling machine, and for the sake of completion we will show the rest of the process. We cover the milling machine in a previous video. The Dor Westbury makes an excellent companion for a Myford Series 7 lathe. The design principle is similar, i.e. these machines are not designed to be used in a tool room for a specific job, but rather do as many small to medium jobs as possible. Of course, a Hardinge HLV is an amazing lathe, undoubtedly superior to a Myford Series 7 in many respects, but it has drawbacks. The machine weighs nearly a tonne, and yet it has a similar swing and even a smaller distance between centres to a Myford. These tool room lathes often don't have a T-slotted cross slide, which means you can't easily use a vertical slide or bolt your workpiece to the cross slide for line boring operations for example. Fundamentally, this is why we love the Myford lathes. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more in the future, please subscribe.